trees, the longest living species on earth. There is nothing more reliable, life-giving, or important to our natural environment than a tree. But when an 80-foot, 20,000-pound oak tree comes crashing into your roof in the middle of the night, these life-sustaining resources suddenly don't feel as forgiving. Severe weather patterns and climate-related disasters have jumped 83% since 2000, causing an estimated $3 trillion in damage. And while homeowners with insurance are eventually able to repair those damages, in the time it takes to finalize a claim, the average temporary tarp on a roof malfunctions anywhere from 5 to 13 times. This begs the question that if another disaster strikes during that time, how in the world would the average tarp protect a home from further damage? Hello, I am your host, Mike Lake. And in today's preview, I will be talking with Matt Lennox. He is the managing director at Stormsail, a company that has developed a polyethylene film that securely heat shrinks around a damaged structure, effectively preventing any possible future damage. Innovation, resiliency, discovery. Join Mike Lake, president and CEO of Leading Cities, as we explore the technologies shaping the possibilities of our future with a preview of tomorrow. Hello and welcome, Matt. Thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Preview of Tomorrow. And of course, I want to thank all of our guests, uh, whether they're listening or viewing this episode. We're always glad to have you here. But what I'm really glad about is the opportunity to introduce you to Matt Lennox. He is the managing director of Storm Sale, a company that has developed a polyethylene film to wrap around storm damaged structures to resist further damage from rain, wind, and hail. So, Matt, I'm really curious. Uh, how is it that this became your passion? Well, firstly, Mike, thanks for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you um, today. And, and um, I guess to answer that question, um, we have to go back uh, a number of years now where um, Sydney was hit with a, an enormous hailstorm. Um, <clears throat> and the company that I was working for at the time were tasked to actually repair that damage. Um, and unfortunately, we had an extended period of wet weather where I watched the damage bill go from like, you know, 50 million to like 450 million, literally overnight. And I thought to myself, there must be a better way. So, you know, we had all these roofs damaged, we had tarps on them, but every time the wind came or another storm came, they blew them off and it reset the whole process. So um, that was the need space for it. Um, and then, you know, after thinking about it and, and, and uh, looking into what was available in the market, um, it took many, many years, but we eventually got to the product of Storm Seal. Well, it, I mean, it, it, I think comes as no surprise, at least for anybody who's been listening to any of the episodes of uh, Preview of Tomorrow, that we have been seeing, as you know, increased uh, intensity and frequency of storms around the world. Um, it, so that there's already a growing need for this, right? Yeah, the, 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 there's no doubt about it, Mike. The, the the climate is changing. I mean, we've done this for the past 15 years. We've seen storms go from, you know, the four 450 to 500 million. They're now billion dollar storms. Um, if you look at Hurricane Ida that hit uh, New Orleans or, you know, um, in the US last year. I mean, that at the moment is $31 billion. I mean, we're talking, you know, dramatic storms and dramatic costs. And part of Storm Seal is to, you know, you know, I, I, I think I've said it before that anyone that cares to listen that most of the damage in the world, not just in the US or Australia or Europe, um, anywhere that a storm occurs, most of the damage happens after the storm. And the reason for that is, is the temporary weather protection that we use, that we've always used, which is a tarpaulin. But you never feel safe living under one. You never feel secure. There's always. And then when they do, the damages become more um, exorbitant, um, yeah. more time to repair. 
um, and, and the anxiety, the anxiety of a homeowner living under one, it's, it's, it's just terrible. So, um, yeah, so there is definitely, um, you know, a, a, you know, as I said, um, that, that damage bill occurring that, that's rapidly increasing from those storms and the frequency of those storms, um, unfortunately, because of the, the change in weather or change in the environment. You know, this this rings a, a particular chord with me because after Hurricane Katrina, also down in New Orleans, um, I, I collected supplies up here in, in the Massachusetts area and drove them all down and, and witnessed firsthand um, the damage and, and the devastation. Yep. Um, absolutely unbelievable. When, when you talk about the tarpaulins, you, I mean, I saw, I don't know how many structures, homes, businesses, you know, covered in blue tarps, you know, and, and that was their roof. Yeah. And Mike, that is it. I mean, that you need to do that. Like that's that immediate temporary weather protection where it's going to last for maybe a week. But when we talk about the insurance space and or just even homeowners um, trying to get their roof fixed and the amount of contractors and roofing materials um, or just the claim process from the insurance side, how much work is involved with that? It takes years. And so a two week tarp is not going to be the solution that gets communities back on their feet. We need to have a solution where it is uh, a, a longer term, um, you know, temporary weather protection that allows people to get back on with their lives. It keeps communities together. In actual fact, like more recently with Hurricane Ida, we, we just did a trial with the, the US Army and, and with FEMA specifically for that was to, you know, as you saw in after Katrina, um, we were putting the uh, storm seal on homes that were often dequalified. And the very purpose of that was to keep them in their home because mm -hmm. it's not the, it's often not FEMA. I mean, in, in many cases it is, but, but most of the times it's the community that cleans up. You know, it's the community that rakes their yards and puts the, the green waste out the front or helps the other you know, neighbor with their fences neighbor. or it's trying to keep that community together. And that's why Storm Seal exists. It, it's to try to keep that community functioning. Well, I was just going to say, when we talk about, you know, the damage, as you said, that most of the damage happens after the storm. I mean, what you're really talking about is, is families, right? And the experience, like as if losing the roof on their home and whatever happened during the storm was not bad enough to then live in this situation where continued damage occurs the the house continues to degrade you know it's it, it, and it's not just homes it's businesses as well and so the ability to get back up on your feet you're being like crippled every time the wind blows or the rain falls yeah a hundred percent it's it's costly in both financial terms and mental health I mean, yeah. we see it firsthand. I mean, often we get called to jobs after they've had four or five tarps already installed and the homeowner is just at, you know, they're at wit's end. I mean, they're just, um, as I said, you, you can't function. If there's another storm that comes through and you're living under that tarp. And I, I kind of, I often tell people if you've ever been on a sailboat and you hear the ricochet of that, the sail, that's yeah. what it's like on your roof. Um, often neighbours can't sleep next door because of the sound of that. Um, it's all these issues that that stem from it. So, um, you know, and and I guess um, you know that that mental space has never really, you know, I guess um, been explored about how people suffer after those storms. But I can tell you, like you said, your experience with Katrina and actually looking at it and and going, wow. I mean. You know, unless you're unfortunate enough to see it, you just can't believe it. <laughs> you just can't cannot believe, believe how bad. Right. Yeah. So, and this is where Storm Seal comes in, right? I mean, it's, it's, you know, I'll be honest with you. When I first learned about Storm Seal, I my initial thought was, really, this is a new idea. <laughs> <laughs> Why hasn't this existed for decades? Before, yeah, yeah. So you, tell tell us tell us about Storm Seal and like how does it work and and what is its impact? Yeah, for sure, Mike. So Storm Seal is a polyethylene film specially designed for the rigors of a roof. So um, what we what what I mean by that is to, you know it's a it's a polyethylene film 
we put it on your roof, we heat shrink it down onto the structure. So that's negating any kind of vertical uplift of wind. It's really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing it does is communicate water using the already the roof surface to the extremities of the building. So we're not going to, um, unlike a tarp where the, the wind can get under it and you know flap and fly it away, um, our product is heat sealed onto the roof. Um, so with that, what we can assure people is that, you know, we've done wind tunnel testing, it's UV treated, it's fire retardant, so they can live in their house without any risk of, of you know, um, spread of flame and, and so forth. It's um, it's designed to, to, I guess, temporarily weatherproof that structure until such time the person can either repair the business or repair the roof, um, whether it's a business or a homeowner, or mm -hmm. until the insurer can actually get there with the trade portal, if you like, and actually repair the roof. So its main purpose is to really keep people weathered in. And that when you look at that holistically, we're looking at this as keep keeping communities together, um, keeping, um, I guess, a, a, a particular area functioning, um, being able to go to work, being able to take the, the kids to school. And that's kind of where, um, where we see the most value of, of Storm Seal. Um, and, and obviously with the insurance networks globally, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, with these costs that increase to the home with tarps, unfortunately, we all pay for that because, yeah. you know, if the claim goes from Good like $20,000 to $100,000, it all gets divvied up the next year and we all just pay an extra pre premium for that. So what we're trying to do is also is to try to put a downward pressure on that average claim cost um, so every homeowner can afford insurance. Um, you know, we see in Florida at the moment, you know, it's it's, a, it's really in peril at the moment in regards to being a homeowner and, and even getting insurance. So those are the things we're trying to do, working hand in hand with the insurance industry, first responder industries, and also homeowners and business owners to make a better outcome for them, which are unfortunate enough to be impacted by storms. And can you give us an example of somebody who unfortunately suffered through, you know, such a storm and 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 how that like yeah. working with storm sale was different from somebody else who has that blue tarp? Yeah, for sure, Mike. I mean, a classic example was a, a big hailstorm here in Sydney uh, a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, I felt so sorry. We had a like for like house, like, you know, almost um, a carbon copy of the houses in, in a, you know next to each other and we storm sealed uh, a family of six so it was a, a mum and dad and four children busy you know the kids were all under 15 they had you know a hectic lifestyle and then the house next door was an elderly couple that both both 86 years old uh, had been in the house for I think something like um, I don't know it was like 62 years or something it was their first house and and um and you know i mean these people had tarps on and and when we looked at the job so we do quality assessments on on the storm seal applications um we were going to the house that had the storm seal on we're look, looking at the house next door going well oh my god the tarp's blown off and you know i mean it went on and on and on and <clears throat> they ended up having 13 tarps on there but they ended up having to move out of their house i mean we're talking about an 86 year old couple that knows where the you know the, the sugar spoon is and um, everything, I mean, their house was neat as a pin, their garden was beautiful, um, but they had to be relocated and were out of their house just under a year. So it was 362 days they were they were out of their house um, and they're 86, you know, I mean, and it didn't need to happen. Whilst we, we've got next door neighbours that are getting on with their life, um, living um, as you would normally kind of live, um, but waiting for that insurance space to catch up and, and, and be able to rectify their roof. So that really kind of, I mean, and that's just not one occasion. <laughs> we see that all the time. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, that, and their claim, I mean, if you looked at their claim, Mike, and it's, it's, it's a, you know, maybe a twenty-five dollars to $30,000 re-roof, it was a $283,000 claim and wow. a year out of their life. I mean, it's just, yeah, it was really, yeah, it's it's really difficult to take that in, but um, that's what we hope to be able to provide a solution for that. What was it, or who was it, or how was it determined that the the family of six got storm sale and the, the elderly couple had to deal with tarps? 
Well, it, it, it's probably an awareness thing, Mike. Maybe the the contractor next door didn't know that it was available, even like even though that there was a product next door on their roof, or or maybe it's just the process of um, what the what the insurer wanted, like they just stipulated tarpaulins and that was all they were allowed to use. So it's about educating the market and and um, and providing, um, I guess, the resources and and um, the know-how to educate that market to, to to know that there's a better way. And we hope, you know, in the future that that um, you know you don't have tarpaulins. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, yeah. they're used under a tent or on the back of your trailer or. Right. You know, you don't put them. They're on. not roofing materials. Not roofing materials. Yeah, they're not meant to stay on a roof. Um, so, um, and the other thing too, Mike, I'd like to, to 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 let you know is that, you know, tarps. People say, oh, you can reuse a tarp. No one ever reuses a tarp if it's on a roof. Yeah, if it's under a tent, by all means, or you know, on the back of your trailer. But when it's on a roof, it rips, it tears, it busts. Usually, that happens four to five times. That tarp goes to landfill. There's nothing short of. So what we hope to do with Storm Seal as well is we repurpose that film that goes into something else. So we're we're trying to lessen that, um, I guess, footprint, that carbon footprint um, of what they're currently doing uh, using, you know, upwards of 13 tarps on a roof. And when they rip, they go straight to landfill. Using the product once, um, we're also improving contractor safety because you don't have to work at height for that extra four or five times. Um, and so that uh, that in itself, the safety and also that recyclability of the product um, is is really paramount for us as well. Well, you've kind of answered this question to some extent, but looking 10, 20, 50 years from now, let's say, yeah. assuming everybody um, who and hopefully none of us do, but it will happen. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So everybody who experiences storm damage has the opportunity and uses storm seal what what do you see as the overall impact there well i see it um you know i definitely have visions of that mike i mean i i i see a better functioning community um immediately after storms um i see more productivity um coming out of that community that's impacted you know more productivity as in you know getting to work and paying the bills and and all that kind of stuff but then further to that, I see the opportunity to really assist countries to get on their feet quicker. For those that aren't, you know, maybe not as, as fortunate as us in maybe Australia or the US or in Europe to weather storms, um, you know, we're, we're blessed to have someone like FEMA and the US Army Corps of Engineers in the US. And, and here in Australia, we've got the state emergency services, um, but places like Fiji and um, the Caribbean and, and you know, I mean, you saw Hurricane Dorian um, a couple of years back, you know, with the with the, the, the poor people of the Bahamas. Um, they may not be as adequately resourced to to be able to, you know, secure their roof. So what we'd like to do is take our knowledge and our learnings and impart that into in, into countries or areas to help them get back on their feet quicker by, you know, letting them do the schools and the, the hospitals and, you um, the, the churches to, to get people and that community back and functioning. Wow. Well, listen, Matt, thank you so much for this work. I mean, it really does. I mean, it's one thing to to reduce the claims and, and limit the damage. I mean, that's impactful enough and, and alone is worth it. But the emotional and mental damage that it does to families and communities is, is in my opinion, where you're really creating a game changer here. So thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you for joining us here on Preview of Tomorrow. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for tuning in to this episode of Preview of Tomorrow. Listeners like you are essential to advancing our efforts to drive resiliency and sustainability for all. I ask that you give us a rating on Apple Podcasts or whichever streaming platform you prefer. Your feedback helps us to grow and share these brief previews of what life in the future can be. In addition to thanking our guests today, I want to thank Peter Roy and Demetria Bridges for making this podcast possible. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and encourage others to also join us each week in previewing the possibilities of tomorrow. Preview of Tomorrow is brought to you by Leading Cities, 
a global nonprofit driving resilience and sustainability for all by unleashing the potential of the world's cities. Join them at leadingcities.org.